Alright, here we're looking at homework 2.5. We got question 11 here giving us some information. So what's the information it tells us? It's saying that AB, line AB is perpendicular. We need to know this symbol. The symbol's perpendicular. And the implication is that when AB intersects BC, it creates a right angle by definition of perpendicular. We know that that angle ABC is a 90 degree angle. Now, it also states here in the given that angles 1, 2, and 3 are in the ratio of 1 to 2 to 3. So essentially, the way you can think about this is as though those angles, whatever the ratios are, it's you have that many parts. So like 1 and 2 and 3. So 1 to 2 would be like if this is x, this would be 2x. If that's the case, what would this angle be? What would angle 3 be if this is a 1 to 2 to 3 ratio? It would be 3x. And so if you think about it, they add up to equal 6 parts, where 1, angle 1 here, is 1 part. So we do know the measure of that whole angle. All those 3 added up is 90 degrees. And so let's just add these angles up to equal 90 degrees. If we combine like terms and solve for x, we figure out that x equals 15. Now if x equals 15, what's the measure of angle 1? If you said 15 degrees, that makes perfect sense. How about the measure of angle 2? Well, it's 2 times x, so we should be getting 30 degrees. And the measure of angle 3, finally, is 3 times x. So we should be getting 45 degrees. Now if you notice, 15 plus 30 plus 45 is going to add up to a total of 90 degrees. <clears throat> Alright, with this next question, we have line A is perpendicular to line B. So once again, the implication there is that we get a right angle. We get actually four right angles here. We're only really interested in a couple of them. Our goal is to prove that angle one is congruent to angle two. And since we already know, like we've kind of outlined this already, both of them are a right angle. So since we know all right angles are congruent, we can prove that those two angles are congruent to each other. We just need to write it out in a proof, so we need to go step by step. Our first is always the given, and in this case, the given is that A is perpendicular to B. Now, by definition of perpendicular, we know that angle 1 and angle 2 are right angles. We don't really care to point out the other ones. We don't need these other angles here. Okay, now, as we've learned before, right angles are congruent. So we'll just say that these two angles are congruent, and we're done. Uh, okay, this next one, number 14, says O is the midpoint of NP. So I'm going to draw the implication of that right away. So here's O, it's the midpoint of NP. The implication is that these two segments are congruent. Because by definition of midpoint, we know that if a point is a midpoint of a segment, then it breaks that segment into two congruent segments. So I know right here that ON is congruent to OP. I'll write it as PO. <laughs> Dog's freaking out. <laughs> okay. 
So I also have this information, Rn is congruent, here's Rn, is congruent to NO. So I'm actually going to put a little tick here and note that this is congruent to this. We need to prove that Rn, this one right here, is congruent to NO. Wait, where's Rn? Rn and PO, these are congruent. Okay. So I'll highlight these with a different color so we can see clearly. These are the ones that they say are congruent. This one will be an easy one. Number one, O is the midpoint of NP. That's a given. And I'm actually going to wait to write my other given. because I want to break this information down like I did in the first place, if you remember what I had said. By definition of midpoint, I can say that PO is congruent to NO. I wrote it as ON here. I'll rewrite it. NO. Order doesn't matter for segments doesn't matter for rays though, but I can write PO and NO are congruent by definition of midpoint. Now I'm going to write my, la my second given, RN is congruent to PO, and this is a given, so I'll write given here. And then if you think about it, if PO is congruent to RN, but PO is also congruent to NO, then we should say by the transitive property of congruence that Rn is congruent to NO. Cool. So there's another proof done. Let's try this next one, number 15. Okay, so what's given? Angle 1 is congruent to angle 4, so I'm going to highlight that on my diagram. And I'm going to start out by writing the givens. There's only one given. I also know, if you look at the diagram, notice Angle 1 and angle 2, this is what we need to notice. These are vertical angles. Do you notice that? If you look closer, maybe? we got these two lines cr crossing. Right here and right here. That's weird. So when those two lines cross, we end up with vertical angles. Same thing's happening here. These angles are vertical as well. So in our next step, let's just point out that these are vertical angles, as this is something we can assume from the diagram. All right, angle one and angle two are vertical angles. And we also pointed out that Angle three, there we go. Angle three and angle four are vertical angles. So I'll just put that in this second uh, statement. I'll put both of those statements in the second statement. Angle three and angle four are vertical angles. But by definition of vertical angles, what do we know? It's actually called the vertical angles postulate. By vertical angles postulate, I know that angle 1 is congruent to angle 2, and I also know that angle 3 is congruent to angle 4. Now, the idea here for my next step, it's kind of a long one, and I should really break it down into two separate steps, but I, 
let's think about it. Angle 1 is congruent to angle 4. Angle 4 is congruent to angle 3. So by transitive property, I can say angle 1 is congruent to angle 3. But then angle 1 is also congruent to angle 2. So if angle 1 is congruent to angle 3, then angle 2 must be congruent to angle 3 by the transitive property. Again, the transitive property of congruence. So you know what? I will write the multiple steps. Since angle 1 is congruent to angle 4, <laughs> angle 1 is congruent to angle 3 by the transitive property of congruence. Let me let this dog in. So we got angle 1 is congruent to angle 3, and we know that angle 1 is congruent to angle 2. So we can say once again by the transitive property. of congruence we know that angle 2 is congruent to angle 3 so hopefully you guys can see how the transitive property works out maybe if I use different highlighting it'll make more sense so angle 1 is congruent to angle 2 and we know like I highlighted in blue angle 4 is congruent to angle 3 so then we know that these two are congruent that's what we we're trying to prove right cool looks like we got it all right we'll do this one last question because I'm about to run out of my 15 minutes What are we trying to prove? We're trying to prove that angle ACB is congruent to angle D. Okay, but I don't know that yet, so I won't actually draw it on my diagram. Um, we know that the measure of angle ACB is a 90 degree angle, and we know that AD is perpendicular to BD. So this creates a right angle, and we also know that this angle is a right angle. Right. Oh, AD is perpendicular to BD, so that's this one. So our goal is to say that they're both right angles so that we can end up saying they're congruent. Haven't we already done this? Like in this proof right here? Angle 1 and angle 2 are right angles. Therefore, since right angles are congruent, we can say they're congruent to each other. So for this one, I just need to make sure I'm stating that angle ACB is a right angle and angle D is a right angle. If I can do that, then I can finish my, my statement or my proof. So the measure of angle ACB equals 90 degrees. And by definition of a right angle, I know that angle ACB is a right angle. So I have that down. I know that ACB, angle ACB is a right angle. Now I just need to show angle D is a right angle. I'm going to write my second given. AD is perpendicular to BD. This is a given. And notice, my next step is going to utilize the definition of perpendicular. I want to change, or transform, I guess you could say, this statement into a statement that works for our objective. By definition, definition of perpendicular, I'll spell it out. I know that angle D is a right angle. Okay, so these are what I have. And these are what I need to state that they are congruent to each other. So finally, angle ACB is congruent to angle D 
because we know that right angles are congruent.